Okay, real talk. This is the equipment I use at every session and I think you'll be surprised. Hey everyone, it's Mike from Lifestyle Boudoir, and today I'm gonna to be completely transparent. I'm gonna talk about the gear that I really use for all of my client sessions. Now you know, I always try to keep my gear to a minimum. And you may have heard me say before, I'd rather limit the gear and devote all of my attention to the client. Doing it this way, the client sees that you're in the moment with them, helping them to get comfortable, relaxed, and looking amazing. Focusing too heavily on the gear takes you away from the client experience. First, let's talk about the cameras. In this day and age, pretty much every camera takes great photos for boudoir. You don't need the latest, greatest, high megapixel, 40 frames per second camera for portraits or boudoir. This is my current lineup of Fujifilm cameras. The X-Pro1, the X100V, the X-T3, X-T4, and X-T5. Now, do I need all these cameras? No, certainly not, but I love them. In many cases, even though I have the 40 megapixel Fujifilm X-T5, I'm almost always gonna pick up the X-T4 for my boudoir sessions. The X-T4 is a 26 megapixel camera, and if you know Fuji, they're often praised as having incredible color science and skin tones. Well, boudoir tends to show a good bit of skin, so I want good skin tones right out of camera. Now let's talk lenses. My current lineup of lenses is here. From left to right, the 23 mm f2, the 56 mm f1.2, the 16 to 55 2.8, the 18 to 55 2.8 to f4 that I use only for run and gun video, and the 35 mm f1.4. Also the manual focus, Mitocon 35 mm f0.95, the TT Artisan's 23 mm f1.4, and the TT Artisan's 50 mm f1.2. But these are mainly for fun and experimentation. Now, out of all these lenses, what do you think I use most? My main lens for boudoir is the 16 to 55 2.8 zoom. This covers the entire range I'd ever need for my work and it's practically glued to my camera. So at this moment, this is my most common camera and lens combination for boudoir. Basic settings. Now, I made a video recently about why my camera settings should not be the most important thing for you. But for transparency, I shoot in manual exposure and 100% raw files in the lossless compressed raw setting. I keep my ISO at 640 because it's the lowest ISO where I can set it to DR400. In other words, the best dynamic range files that this camera will produce. I tend to keep my aperture at f2.8 for softer backgrounds. And if my ISO is usually at 640 and my aperture is usually at f2.8, I'm literally only adjusting my shutter speed from situation to situation. This is super efficient. Now if I'm shooting outdoors at the pool or on my balcony or something, then I'll most likely lower my ISO to 160 or less and raise my shutter speed as needed. But to be honest, I'm mostly shooting inside for all of my client sessions. My lighting. I generally start all my sessions with natural light, whether that's sunlight out on the balcony or with window light in the window set or the light bedroom set. I'll generally use V-flats to bounce a little light into the shadow side of the face. Window light, when done right, is amazing and it's about the most cost-effective lighting you'll ever use. If you master it, you may never need anything else. Well, unless of course it's nighttime or raining outside. Constant light. In most cases these days, for my constant light, I'm using the Godox LS500 bicolor LED light sticks. They have the attached barn doors to constrict the beam and to put the light where I need it and nowhere else. These lights are used when I want directional or dramatic lighting. Now, prior to the Godox light sticks, I used the Westcott Ice Light. They're amazing, but they're also sadly discontinued. Westcott, if you're listening, what the heck were you thinking? 
these lights are great. Now they're slightly less powerful than the Godox ones, but the light is just a bit creamier on the skin. The projector. I love this device. I feel like it definitely brought a higher production value to my images. I use the Godox SL203 LED light and the Godox projector attachment. This can create many patterns from dappled light to Venetian blinds to several window frames using these little gobos. And I use this combination for at least one setup each client session. Now, if you're enjoying the content here, please give me a like and subscribe. And if you have questions, just drop them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer any and all of your questions, unless of course they're too personal. Okay, now for the strobes. I have to tell you, I'm using strobes less and less these days. But if you're curious, I have an AD300 Pro, three AD200 Pros, a V1 speed light, two 685 speed lights, and I have a bunch of accessories for all of them that make them even more versatile. They're all triggered by and adjusted by the Godox X Pro F trigger. So the reasons I'm using strobes less is that it takes extra time and multiple test shots to dial in the lighting exactly the way I want it. And of course, the more strobe heads you use, the longer it takes to dial it in. And the more tests you have to do, and the longer it takes, the more it affects the client experience. They're taken out of the warm, fuzzy headspace, and it'll take them longer to get back in that right mood again. Another reason is this. Most of my clients are not models. They're women that are not used to being photographed. That pop and flash can startle them, and it can be unnerving. And of course, with constant light over strobes, it's pretty much what you see is what you get. So that's really efficient. How about modifiers? Let's talk soft boxes. I rarely use them anymore. They just don't really work with my style. I have several different sizes and shapes of soft boxes, multiple sizes of umbrellas, and multiple reflectors. Most of them just collect dust now because they don't support what I'm doing with my photography these days. Software and workflow. As far as software goes, I use Capture One for my raw processing and file management, Adobe Photoshop for retouching, as well as a few of the Retouch For Me apps, Luminar Neo, and lately Evoto for very fast AI-based retouching. For client management, contacts, contracts, and invoicing, my choice is 17 hats. If you'd like me to get more into the software I use, please let me know in the comments. And perhaps we'll do a video on those one day soon. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the video. And until I see you in the next one, take care. And cut. <laughs>